Hello everyone, in today's video I want to talk about overconsumption, overspending money on clothing and fashion accessories, and our obsession with materialism and stuff. And in today's video I want to give my opinion from a consumer point of view and not necessarily from the legal point of view, although you will see some glimpses of the latter. So let's get it started. Let's talk about women as uh, number one consumers in the world. According to Jordan B. Peterson, women dictate and dominate the market. And according to the Forbes magazine article, the Forbes magazine says that women drive 70 to 80 percent of all consumer purchasing decisions. So the article that I found on the Forbes magazine actually is targeted at um, U.S. American women. But I guess you get the point, right? Um, that is true, um, that women are number one uh, consumers of the world when it comes to specifically and especially uh, fashion accessories, clothing, etc. And I mean, it's not a science or something. If you go just, uh, you know, to any shop, you will see that women will spend more time thinking whether they will need to buy this or that a particular item. And it doesn't necessarily concern, um, you know, has to do with our choice when it comes to clothing. Same goes for coffee, tea, um, I don't know what kind of um, sugar to buy, anything. What I mean is that us women, we spend more time thinking what to buy, and the same goes. Uh, the same is true uh, when it comes to the choice of uh, items. Like uh, we actually over overspend. We buy more than we need it, and more most often than not, uh, women are involved in um, impulse buying and shopping spree stuff like that. Another example is that when you go to any shop, there are more clothing items and fashion accessories uh, for women than men, and that is because women buy more and they spend more. It doesn't mean necessarily that we have more needs than men, but um, in a way, yes, of course, we need more items, like let's say we need um, skirts, but men just need pants, then women have pants and skirts, and then uh, women need to wear, um, you know, a particular, women need to have also a dress, men do not need to have a dress. So that also, uh, the gender specific uh, clothing classification also influences our choice. So we all know that fast fashion is the second world's uh, largest um, polluter in the world, and that is in part because we overspend and overconsume. Uh, no one forces us to buy, right? So um, we are actually, um, as consumers, um, you know, the whole world population, we are responsible for these, um, you know, CO2 emissions and these landfills. So I'm thinking that uh, specifically when it comes to women, if women modify their consumer behavior for like, I don't know, 50%. I'm not a statistician, a statistician, excuse me, but you get the point. So if we significantly, I mean, half the size, half the amount of time, uh, if we cut it 50% our spending habit, uh, along with, um, you know, if we stop cherishing shopping holes, I think that in this case, fast fashion sales will go down significantly, hence less textile waste. Now, as you know, there is a huge critique in terms of fast fashion brands being irresponsible and um, polluting the environment. I have already mentioned that briefly. And uh, in this regard, um, there is an understanding, a kind of a misunderstanding in a way, a trend going on, which is opening sustainable clothing lines uh, as a counter response to what fast fashion industry is being criticized for. And many people, you know, think that sustainable brands will be helpful that uh, if we turn we, if we all turn to sustainable brands then we will suddenly you know solve our problems like the world will be a better place to live in and that um there will be no more fast fashion brands the answer is yes and no i want to uh, explain you briefly what i mean of course i will come back to the subject uh, in uh, regarding sustainable clothing brands and of uh, sustainable fashion in my upcoming videos but uh, let's talk about it briefly in this video an acquaintance of mine sent me a link to a sustainable brand called Simply Suzette, and when I saw their prices, I was like, wow, this could not be possible. I cannot believe my eyes. It was like the pricing. It was $150 to $300 for a piece of clothing. Then I sent this person, my acquaintance, uh, another brand, a link to another brand, which is called Bigo. You know, I talked about that, this brand, in my uh, previous one of my previous YouTube videos. Um, which was dedicated to the denim industry. So Bigo is a sustainable brand um, based in Turkey, established by a former um, child labor, Mr. child worker, Mr. Tamir. And so is Simply Suzette, also a denim clothing brand. How come Bigo clothing is only $60 per jeans and Suzette's uh, clothing, also denim included, is like two to five times uh, more? 
I get it that uh, the other one is based in Turkey, but still the price difference cannot be justified when it comes to Suzette. When I tried to find information on their website on the Simply Suzette, the website would not load for an error. Perhaps that was only for that particular time when I was looking at that website. But the point is that, um, you know, sustainable brands are today proposing in 95, 99% of the time, they're proposing us higher prices. Well, higher is not the word, like skyrocketing prices, like... And uh, when people look at these prices, they, they of course, will not uh, turn to buying uh, from sustainable brands. As for Bigo, I can assure you that it is sustainable and that I have a strong belief that, uh, you know, they are 100% ethical. No doubt about that. But uh, I have a little bit of doubt regarding Suzette, simply Suzette, not regarding the fact that it's sustainable or not. It could as well be sustainable, but how come its prices are that high? I mean, this video has nothing to do with this, the Simply Suzette or any other brand, right? This is purely regarding you know, this whole perception about overspending and uh, the role of sustainable fashion brands in this perspective. Um, what I'm trying to say here is that I'm anyways, um, just saying, don't believe the hype when you see those big prices. And when you see that the brand is so called sustainable for them, from one hand, yes, they want to be ethical. And that's why their prices are high. But their, their prices could be that high, because it's a marketing strategy. So when sustainable brands are offering clothing for that much, no wonder why everyone is going to run to their um, ever-loving uh, fast fashion brands. And I'm telling this from a consumer uh, standpoint as a former shopaholic and um, recovering shopaholic, if I can say so. I am being completely 100% honest here. I think that honesty is um, a blueprint when it comes to people, you know, transitioning from, you know, being uh, avid uh, sh shoppers, vivid shoppers to someone who sees that there is a problem in that, not just a global problem, but the individual problem and our attitude and our relationship with the mother nature and uh, with, uh, you know, simply uh, what matters in life and what not. So sustainable brands, um, that being said, are not going to save the world from overconsumption, weak labor conditions, and the environmental damage. And here's an important information that is, uh, of course, my personal opinion. It's not a blueprint immediately, but um, here's what I'm going to say. The world needs fast fashion brands to exist, at least, um, at least for now, because they provide millions of job opportunities in developing countries and are the main, the only source for millions of people for their survival. Of course, fast fashion brands cannot, the whole fast fashion industry cannot just exist the way it is for years for, you know, because now it's really the time for them to change their uh, business model. So the business model called fast fashion needs to change and needs to adapt to the realities and the needs of our time. What am I proposing? I'm, I'm saying that um, if um, the following things will be done by the fast fashion industry, then um the world will be a better place, environmentally speaking. So first, increase prices, which will be inclusive of and reflect better garment workers' wages. And second, no more 24 collections per year. And speaking of high prices, you know, I said that prices of fast fashion brands are very low, and then the sustainable brands, they are now proposing really like quite skyrocketing prices. And then there I go, uh, you know, high fashion brands. In the example of, for example, Rihanna's Fenty uh, fashion line, Louis Vuitton closed down Rihanna's Fenty fashion house in Paris. Um, you know that uh, Rihanna's fashion line, uh, clothing line, is, as um, well as everybody else's, uh, you know, when it comes to high fashion, their prices are the highest, right? So um, in this regard, it looks to me that the closure of the, um, the shop in Paris has to do with the fact that the expectations did not meet the needs of the market and the clientele. As I have observed, the Fenty clothing line is quite expensive and slightly speaking a little too trendy and, um, you know, like uh, revealing and it's not... Um, it's not very, um, you know, business type or something like that. Um, it's more kind of like... Um, I don't know, Fashion Nova with a mix of, um, you know, business uh, attire. So that kind of thing. And the young generation is Fenty's clientele. So really, they have no such big money as to pay 800 um, US dollars per an outfit, right? Um, they might have like around 100 or I don't know, 80-ish, uh, something they pay for um, Fashion Nova and other brands. So what happens in the situation is that uh, the prices were high for the existing clientele of the Fenty fashion line. 
we know the trends do not stand the test of time, or else another word for the above mentioned fashion line would be unsustainable. Hence is the closure of the shop. So that was my video regarding overconsumption, uh, prices that need to be, you know, average, that they need to correspond to, you know, labor conditions and uh, respond to the needs of the market, that we cannot just propose high prices and say that we are sustainable. Yes, the brand is sustainable, but... Um, they will not be selling if their, their prices are skyrocketing. And also, I talked about the role of women. Uh, women um, dominate the market and um, dictate uh, the market, as J.B. Peterson said. And uh, Forbes magazine said that we are 70 to 80 percent, you know, you know, we we control the consumer decisions and um, and that we are also number one uh, shoppers, um, you know, when it comes in comparison with other groups like men and older age people, etc. The point is the overconsumption is the problem and uh, we, we dig deeper than the fast fashion industry. Apart from overproducing, uh, it has uh, caused problems in the area of uh, working um, conditions in developing countries. Um, and also it has caused the environmental damage. But regarding the environmental damage, it's also related to the fact that we, people in developing countries that have more or less reached the level of developed countries, and uh, first and foremost, uh, people in developed countries, in advanced economies, we overconsume. Hence, this is the main problem because we do not ask uh, a question as why these prices are low. Yes, we know that they were made in Bangladesh, in uh, India, etc. But... Um, here comes a turning point when people are really, um, you know, there's an awareness going on. And um, I think that that's good. I think that people need to uh, spend less uh, on clothes and hence, um, you know, there will be less uh, overconsumption, less consumption of clothing, what I mean. And hence, there will be a decrease in mass production of clothes. Thank you for watching. If you have stayed until the end of the video, I will be uploading every Sunday by 10 a.m. CT, Central European time. Until then, I wish you uh, a good day, good week. And uh, see you next Sunday. Bye.